difficile, c'est la gestion de l'oxygène. Hein. C'est beaucoup de temps où on est accaparé par l'oxygène. Et ben... This is Solar Impulse TV. I'm Connor Lennon, back again for another update. It's our energy neutral evening update. Now, you may have heard of Tinder. We can do even better. We bring together people across the ocean. I have mission engineer Eve Heller, and he can say a hello now to Carol in Hawaii. Go on, say hello. Carol is not yet in Hawaii. Oh, I'll tell you, that's the problem with Tinder. You see, it never works properly. Anyway, she'll watch it later. Go on, say hello. Hi, Carol. Hi to Japan, yeah. She'll be so impressed by that message. She'll be delighted. Thank you very much. Eve, mission engineer, and uh, he is the man who you may have seen in the front room a little earlier, uh, the uh, Capcom, the pilot communication, speaking to André Borschberg, who is up at his maximum altitude. Is he behaving well to your satisfaction? Yeah, he's absolutely in a good mood. He is happy. He makes jokes all the time. So it's great. Well, let's take a quick look at the front room now, if we can, because uh, we have our initiator and chairman who is there as well. And uh, he's having a chat with André Borschberg. I can see him at the corner of my eye. Now, he will be leaving the Monaco Mission Control Center very shortly. Uh, we may try and grab a word with him before he leaves. He'll be taking a plane to go to Hawaii to meet André Borschberg in Hawaii at Kalialoa Airport. There he is having a chat now with, um, with Bertrand. Now, this is our energy neutral evening update. It's morning for us in Monaco, so it gets a bit confusing. And uh, let's see if we can take a look at uh, the situation so far. Let's take a look at the graph, the planning tool, PLATU, for Sol Day 3, moving into Sol Day 4. And uh, let's see if we can find that now. The planning tool, which shows us the altitude profile. There we go. We got there in the end, didn't we, Eve? Right. Yeah. If you could take us through where we are now exactly with regards to the energy neutral evening time and then we'll uh, have a look further ahead. Currently we are at flight level 280 um, at the end of our phase at top altitude. Just shortly before descent or during descent in the moment we are yeah, descending slowly down to our loitering altitude at around 6,000 feet this night. Okay, so just to explain more about energy, energy neutral evening, which I can't even say properly, uh, let's go back to the energy page of our website. And this will give us an idea of what's happening now. Okay, there we are. Now this is, this shows us that we still have energy coming into the batteries. Now when we reach energy neutral evening, this is going to turn red on all the batteries. Is that correct? This is correct, yeah. So we, during the climb, we... Um, charge the batteries until they are full. At flight level 280, we stay at this altitude and at a certain moment, which is called energy neutral evening, we have the same amount of energy we need to sustain the altitude as we get from the solar cells. And after the sun goes down, we start with our descent with full batteries until yeah, we do not have any sun anymore and then we have to use the batteries. And we start again. And now on this profile is where we can see uh, what's happening. As you said, we're here now, uh, maximum flight level around about 28,000 feet, 8,500 meters. And when we start the descent, this is the point at which we're using the, the potential energy and also the battery energy. As you say, there's no more sun left. And we want to get down to here. This is our next critical point, energy neutral morning. And uh, we're looking now, this is quite exciting because we're, we're looking now we can see the end now. We can start to see the end in sight. We've reached the halfway point in terms of uh, the duration of this flight already. The duration was shortened slightly, and that's a good sign. That shows that it's all been going extremely well. So uh, can you give us a, a bit of an approximation of, of the overall flight time that you're expecting now? Approximately uh, five hours less than the expected 120 hours, so uh, around 115. But it all depends on when we can cross the, the second front. This morning we crossed the first front. It was quite easy. It was not a big problem. So we could, um, could have shortened the, the holding in front of the front. And the next thing we see here is another very long holding um, before we cross the second front. And if we reach Sol 4, we see properly how this front evolves. Um, 
and maybe we can shorten this holding and then we arrive earlier in, uh, in Hawaii. Yeah, it's a good point about the crossing of the front. You know, this was mentioned, you can go back on the website and you can have a, a look down our logbook when we crossed that cold front. Now, this was expected to be a really big deal because for weeks and weeks, uh, this is what kept us down here, like a wall, uh, meaning that we couldn't even take off because it was deemed to be too dangerous for us to fly through these fronts. But as you said, we've been laughing about this front now. We, uh, fronts and we're not scared of them anymore, but this front really was not as strong as we'd been expecting. And, and as you said, barely a front at all. However, the next one, um, around about here, uh, between Sol 4 and Sol 5, this is a, this is a real front. It's still more active than the one we crossed this, this morning. This morning was only remnants of the front, where we could um, fly above at around 140, or the flight level 140. The clouds reached tops of around 8,000, I think. So this was not a problem. The next one we will see how it evolves. But um, I think our meteorologists will find a way, a way to fly around it or above for, for a tunnel or whatever they come. Okay, as you said, there's this massive holding here, around about, well, almost a 12-hour hold. It is a 12-hour holding. It is a 12-hour holding area. Yeah. Okay, so 12 hours where we can't be advancing uh, towards our destination because we have to wait for the right time to cross this front. I think this would be a good time to now to have a look at our Altron animation, which shows the plane from Nagoya going through to Hawaii, because you get a really good idea of the way in which the plane has to stop at certain points. Here, it find a clear path through the clouds. Yeah, there's the first... Holding. And there we've got some clouds chasing us here as Second well. Second holding, third holding. And then on again. Some dangerous weather coming up here, the right of the screen. And we can see now the holding. And there we get, make it to Hawaii. So it's, it's a ballet, it's a choreography to make sure that we can advance and, and stop at certain times and to avoid what we're calling white stuff. I think this is the new term for clouds around here, isn't it? Because clouds, it's, it's, a, it's a bad sign. It's not a bad sign, but it depends which cloud. And this, what we see here, is actually a new model, I think, where we don't see all the clouds anymore, or not all the Cyrus clouds we had before. The earlier calculation tool showed them a little bit more, so everyone was afraid. Now we adjusted it, and now we can clearly say where are the, where, which clouds. And this plateau, we only see the clouds above the airplane. This is why it changed. As we change in altitude, also the clouds above the aircraft change. This is why it gets, gets bigger and, and smaller quite fast. Okay, thanks to Christoph Bezo from our simulation team who's watching there at the back. Hello, Christoph. Thank you very much for supplying that uh, uh, Altra animation. He's gone now. He's hiding. He's escaping from us. Now we can't see him, uh, unfortunately. Thanks to Christoph Bezo and the rest of the simulation team, Stefan Young and Eleanor Grava, who we've spoken to a little earlier. Uh, we can also take a look now at the flight plan with Eve Heller, mission engineer. Let's take a look at that, the flight plan now. Okay, and this is, well, start is not Nagoya. Now, start is more or less where we are now from here to Hawaii. Is there anything that you can tell us, anything that's changed uh, from previous uh, approximations or forecasts of the flight plan? Not really. We are now approximately here, three hours in front of the anti-meridian, where we change the time. Okay, red is high, blue is low. Exactly. And um, we're going down. What you can see here is midway. It's a lonely island, which is still a runway on there, but we won't go there, hopefully. <laughs> no, yeah. so far there's, it looks like uh, there's no chance that we need to take any drastic action. I mean, it's, it was called yesterday by Wim de Troyer, the, the, uh, by Luke Trulimans, in fact, the, the weather window of the year. Yeah, it really looks like the weather window of the year. We did not think that it's actually like this, so we have been lucky that we were really chased this window. Okay, so we're learning things all, every day, and uh, we are, well, for quite some time now we've been in, uh, in unknown territory, we've gone over the halfway mark. Let's take a look at the energy levels as well, I think this is important, the energy uh, part of our website. Looking at the website now. Okay, great. Now, uh, clearly now we are into energy neutral evening territory, uh, we're getting there anyway, we've got one battery which is starting... Uh, to decharge and we are still in sun and battery powering the aircraft. So we're getting around that energy neutral evening mark. I know it's a, it's a, a timing that you fix in advance, uh, but I guess the, the true term for energy neutral evening is when all these batteries are in the red and decharging. Correct, yeah. 
Okay, so what is it, time is it now? So it's coming up to uh, 6 UTC. So uh, we're more or less within the timing, or are you quite happy with that? We are quite happy, yeah. yeah we can also adjust those signs on, uh, on the home page with the power which the pa um, pilot applies. If he takes the power away, we still will get green, but we can't hold the altitude anymore. And now we are already in a descent, so it's part of the adjustment of the pilot. But we passed energy neutral evening around 15 minutes ago. Okay, so the really important thing here is to say that the phase we're in now, and this is why we're speaking to you now at this point, is that we're in the, the, the phase of the flight whereby the batteries are powering the engines, batteries are powering Solar Impulse 2 and taking it through the night. This is again the only solar powered plane that can fly day and night without any fuel at all, just the power of the sun which is uh, pushing us through onto our final destination of Hawaii. Uh, we're way beyond any record that's been broken. The last record was set by the same pilot, André Borschberg. Uh, if we can go back to the timings again of, uh, of how far we've travelled so far and how far we've got to go. There we go. We're way over 50% now, 53% and 3,569 kilometres to go. So well on our way. Look at that. This for me is the most extraordinary one for a solo flight. Two days, 11 hours and 57 minutes, breaking a record for solar aviation every single second. Uh, these are unofficial records so far. They have to be certified by the uh, FAI. Uh, we've been getting loads of press already around the world, as you'd expect, many of them focusing on the records that have been broken and um, some, of the, some really big media who are talking about Solar Impulse. And uh, we will have a full update, a press review for you at the... Uh, show for us is tonight for solar impulse it's the morning energy neutral morning show uh, which will be at around uh, 1830 utc we'll give you the exact timings a little later on thanks very much eve lovely talking to you are you sure you don't want to say anything else have you thought about a poem something nice and, and poetic and romantic you can say not at all sorry that's the kind of guy he is all right, thanks very much, Chief. And I'll let you get back to your post. And let's just see, I think Bertrand Picard has left now. He was in the MCC a little earlier. He'll have left to take the plane. And the next time we'll see him will be in Hawaii. Uh, as soon as he arrives, we'll try and get a chat with him. And we're also hoping to get some first images of our team in Hawaii at Kalialoa Airport as they await the arrival of André Borschberg. It's going to happen. 3,500 kilometers to go, but we have reached that halfway point and all is looking good. I'll be back with a briefing update. We have update briefings from the team when they change their shifts. And this is a good chance for us to look at what has previously happened over the last 12 hours. And we take a look ahead to what's happened for the next 12 hours. A reminder of why we're doing all this, it's not just for fun, it's not just to have a good time in Monaco, we're doing this because we want to raise awareness about the way that the world uses energy. We use energy in an extremely efficient way, we only use the sun's rays, not any pollution at all, not a drop of fuel is being used, and we believe here at Solar Impulse, and we think you believe as well, that we could all be using energy more efficiently, and to uh, really draw awareness and get lots of people around the world joining us. We have created Future is Clean. That's futureisclean.org. And we can have fun doing this as well. We have the paper plane challenge. Every day people are sending in their paper plane videos to find out how to do that. Futureisclean.org is the website to go to. And we'll leave you now with our latest paper planes challenge. I think it's our eighth one now. Here we go, paper planes. And there's one, well, okay, we was, did we see that? There we go. Our poor cameraman, Laurent, is doing his best to try and throw a paper plane in my face, but anyway, see you soon. Can you catch it?
can buy sensors 